Hello, my name is Patrick. Welcome to the Touch of God Ministry. I'm the ministry of the minister of the Touch of God Ministry. I welcome you to this preaching teaching video, and I believe today you're going to receive a touch and encounter that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and the power of God will fall a fall a fresh upon you, and that oh God is going to do wonderful things in your life. So get ready to be blessed. Get ready to be healed. Get ready to be saved. Get ready to receive an encounter from God today in the mighty name of Jesus. So uh, the Lord put something in my spirit, you know, to preach and teach about today. And that is the nine gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. What is the nine gift of the Holy Spirit? And that why we should ask our Heavenly Father God daily to use us, to anoint us, with the nine gift of the Holy Spirit, so He could use us to do signs and wonders and miracles. Okay, so, so we're gonna preach and teach about that today. So get ready to receive an impartation of the nine gift of the Holy Spirit. Get ready for that for the nine gift of the Holy Spirit to manifest in your life, in my life, in a greater measure in Jesus' name. So let us begin. You know, we have to understand before we ask about uh, ask our heavenly Father God. To use this nine gift, we have to know what is the nine gift of the Holy Spirit. Why God wants us to, why God wants to use us in the nine gift of the Holy Spirit. Why first, why He gave us the nine gift of the Holy Spirit. Then why He wanna wanna use us in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, first the understanding. We have to understand what are the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why Heavenly Father God gave us such wonderful gift by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 11. Now concerning spiritual gift, now concerning spiritual gift, uh, now concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles cut away by these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one can speak by the Spirit of God calling Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Okay? There are diversity of gifts, okay? By the but the same spirit, they are different of ministry by the same Lord, and they are diversely active by the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to each one to profit, so is given to us by have our Heavenly Father to profit for our lives, for the church, for the body of Christ. It's a profit, okay? That means it is there to bless us, bless others, and bless the church, okay. To give us for profit. For one is giving the word of wisdom through the spirit. Another is giving the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another gift of faith by the same spirit. To another gift of healing by the same spirit. To another working of miracle. To another prophecy. And, and to another discernment of spirit. To another different kind of tongues. And to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things. Distribute to each of them individual as he will. So the so it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's gifts by the Holy Spirit. So when we are filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost, when we're baptized with the Holy Ghost, those gifts will start being made manifest in our lives. So, and that's why I said there's different levels of those gifts. And as we be filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost, okay, then you're going to see different manifestation, different flow, diversity of gift that will flow out of us. That's why you see, if you look in the church, not everyone looks the same. You know, not every pastor is the same, not every evangelist is the same. But as the Holy Spirit falls upon them and flow through them, you see that how God will use them uniquely in their own way. Sometimes there's ministers that basically if they play music, the power of God is released through those, through those, uh, through the playing of music. They do this through their preaching. The power of God is released through their teaching. The power of God is released through you know, and there's different you know, some even dance. I mean, a dance, prophetic dance, you know, where they dance and it's God speaking to them through that prophetic dance. Okay, so there's diversities of gift. Okay, different diversity of activities that you have to know that when the Holy Spirit will fill you, will fill you and flow through you that there's going to be a manifestation of the gift of the holy spirit i remember hearing this from um from a well man of god he said that he went to a place he was preaching the fire god was being released upon that the church you know and everyone was being touched but the pastor's son the pastor's son was he he wasn't you know like you know laughing as 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 the rest of the people in the church was from this guest minister 
and everyone thought oh man you know why is this he's not receiving he's the pastor's son but what they didn't realize is that you know every night the pastor's son would go home and then go on the piano and start playing the piano and what they found out was that what they found out later on is that the pastor's son listen to this you're gonna love this the pastor's son <laughs> was hearing from God tunes musical tunes and he ended up being the, a great musician, great worship leader. Like songs from heaven came upon him. He knew how to, like, he, you know, so in a way, he, he, you know, he was being touched. He was being anointed. It just, it may not have been the anointing that others, how others were being touched, but he was being touched. Okay, and that's why, you know, why we need the Holy Spirit. We need to move the Holy Spirit. We need to stay under the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. As, as we get under the power of the Holy Ghost, night and day, we want to see the manifestation of the nine gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in your life, in the church's body, in Jesus' name. Okay. So, so diversity of gift, different ministries, diversity of activity, different flows, or different ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, diversity of gift, the nine gift of the spirit. So dif different ways it use, it flows to you. The, the, the diversity of active is different way it flows to you. Different ministry, different ministry, how it, it flows to those ministry and diversity of gift, the nine gift, how it's different. Some people, I know some churches, they're more prophetic while another church is more healing. So, you know, that's just how that church want. If that church want more healing, then they're going to believe God for the gift of healing. If that church like prophecy, they're going to believe God for the gift of prophecy. Okay. And those gifts will flow out of those churches. And not that, you know, the prophecy church doesn't have healing or the, or the healing church doesn't have prophecy. It just, the flow comes from healing or prophecy. It just, that's what those pastors and of those churches want. You know, that's why I said for me, I would say, you know, I love the utterance gift. I love to flow in the utterance gift and I love the gift of faith. It's a wonderful gift. You know, that's why you see me when you see me like ministering on this. You see me start you know, go, yeah, because that's how it flows through me. The utterance gift. So that's why I said that the more you get under the Holy Spirit, the more you remain in the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to see nine gifts of the Holy Spirit flow out of you. Maybe God, God anoints you to, to heal the sick. Maybe, you know, prophecy. Maybe, you know, uh, discernment of spirit. Maybe, you know, there's different type of gifts that are available to you, you know, in for you to believe God for and also that will manifest out of you as you get under the power of the Holy Ghost. Okay, and now we're gonna we're gonna talk about the different, you know, the three there's three categories of these gifting. Okay, they are gifts that say something, and they are gifts that reveal something. They are gifts that uh, that saying, revealing, and doing. Okay, so three, so nine gifts, three gifts per one, one, you know, one, 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 what, what, one reveal, one say, one do. Okay, so. We're gonna go, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you based on the Bible, biblical verse of where those gifts were manifested. So one of my favorite, the you know, different kind of tongue interpretation of tongues, you know, and prophecy, the utterance gift, okay, the utter to utter, okay, to speak out to the gifts that say something, okay. So Acts two. When the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting, and they appeared to them, divided tongue as a fire, and one sat sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. So the utterance gift is a gift that basically flow out of you. You start speaking it forth. You start speaking. It's, it's, it bubbles out of you. Tongues, tongues and interpretation. Of tongue. And now just bear with me. We're not talking about the, the regular tongue. We're talking about now the gift of tongues. Okay. There's the, there's the regular tongue that, you know, when you baptize, you oh, hold on. And there's the gift of tongues, which is a deeper level, greater level of, you know, and interpretation is just basically you interpreting what you just said. And those two will equal prophecy. And now there's the prophetic gift. So these are gifts that say something, say what God is saying. Saying, okay, 
the Lord brought this to me. Um, I'm going to show you, um, you know. In the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, it was this wonderful scripture that I like. I still love it when, uh, you know, I would I think it was, uh, let me, let me get. It's, it's in the book of Acts. This, yeah, it's uh, let me see. Da, 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 da. First. now, acts, uh, acts, uh. Acts 21, 11. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hand and said, this is what the Holy Spirit say. In this, in this way, the Jews at Jerusalem will bound the man who owned the belt and deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. So the Holy Spirit spoke to Agabus, the prophet, okay? And this was a prophetic word spoken to Paul regarding the stuff that Paul was about to go and, you know, to, when he was about to be arrested in when because he was heading to Jerusalem. So Agabus, the prophet, the, the New Testament prophet, basically say, hey, this is what the Holy Spirit's saying to me right now, that basically if you, you know, if you go there, you're going to be bound up, you're going to be arrested, you're going to go to jail. So it was by the Holy Spirit, you know, the Agabus spoke that word. And that's an utterance gift, you know, that basically that flow out of Agabus because he was, re, he was, he was, he spoke it what the Holy Spirit said to him. So the utterance gift is a gift flowing out of your mouth, speaking. That's why you see many people, they love prophecy because it's, it's bubbling forth. It, you're prophesying the word of God. You're prophesying the rhema word of God that will go forth. And again, I always tell people regarding prophecy, prophecy has to be edification, confirmation, exhortation. We're not led by prophecy, okay? Because remember, Paul already knew he, he was heading to Jerusalem. He knew that was going to happen. All Abigail, Ag, Prophet Agabus was doing was confirming to Paul that this was going to happen to him when he went to Jerusalem. So just know that we're not led by prophecy, okay? But prophecy is edification, confirmation, exhortation, okay? And that we have to, the prophecy will only confirm what God already spoken to you to do, okay? And, you know, and then, and then, in verse 5, they all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues as, a, as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Judea, devout men from every nation under the heaven. When, when this sound occurred and multiple came together, were confused because everyone heard and sp him speaking in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these speak Galilean? How is it that they hear each of their own language in which we were born? Parthian, Medemite, Elamite, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Perea, Philia, Egypt, part of Libya, adjoining uh, to Syria, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretan, Arab. We heard them speaking our own tongue and wonderful work of God. So that's the interpretation of tongue. Because remember, you know, if if you if you have a regular believer uh, pray in tongues, you're just gonna hear 
praying in tongues. But that tongue that they heard was the was the tongue interpretation because that tongue, when they heard it, they heard their own language. Think of it. They all heard individually their own language. Different languages. That was a miracle, a sign, and a wonder by the gift of a gift of tongues, you know, and the and the utterance gift, and also prophecy. Okay, because then later on, you know, Peter went and, st and spoke the uh, preached the first word and prophesied, you know, what the word of the Lord was. You know, and again, Acts two seventeen. It's it, this was what one one of the stuff that Peter said. You know, it shall come to pass that day, says the Lord, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons, your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see vision, your old men shall dream dream, and on my maiden man servant, on my maiden servant, I will pour out my spirit, my Holy Spirit on those days, they shall prophesy. So you realize right now is that already once the Holy Spirit came in, already you saw two manifestations of those gifts, okay? The utterance gift, and you know, in that utterance gift prophecy and tongues and interpretation of tongues so whenever there's a manifestation a move of the holy spirit in your life in a local church you're going to see people prophesy one but also you're going to see people praying and speaking in tongues and they're going to be interpretation of tongues manifested in those move of the holy spirit so just to let you know again tongue you know the the, the first three the the group the first three is the one the gift that says something okay Tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. These are gifts that say something, speak something by God. Speak the word of God. Like Agabus, he spoke the word of God. He proclaimed the word of God. So that's why we, we spoke the word of God, okay? So when God when God prophesied a word, okay, we're not talking about the, the logos, okay, the written word. We're talking about the rhema word of God that will come out of us. And basically, we, we prophesy that. You see me various of time in my broadcast. All of a sudden, I feel the Holy Ghost come upon me. And he flows through me, and all of a sudden, I started speaking a word of the Lord, and that's just the, that that's just that utterance gift flowing out of me to bless you and bless me too. Okay, so basically, for the first group is the utterance gift, the gift that says something. Now we're gonna go to the secondary gift, which a lot of people sometimes mistake these as as prophecy, but in reality, they're revelatory gift. Okay. These are gifts that reveal something, the revelatory, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discernment and spirit. So the word of wisdom is a is for the future to reveal to you, to tell you like when when um uh, when when Peter say, hey, you know, we need to pay the temple tax, okay, in the Bible. And, you know, basically Jesus told them, go fish, okay? And the first fish you first fish you you catch, that's gonna have a gold coin in its mouth. Okay, so that was two gifts flowing out of revealing from, you know, in Jesus that he knew that there was a fish that had one gold coin in his mouth and that gold coin should be able to pay. So that was, and what was that? That also was applied in the word of wisdom because now he gave him a word and then he went and apply it. Peter went to apply it and by doing that, he got the blessing. So word of wisdom is for the future in a sense, direction for the future. The word of knowledge is is the present and the past. Again, going back, like I said, you know, how did Jesus know that there was a gold fish? There was a fish with the there was a fish with a gold coin in his mouth. He knew by the revelatory gift. Okay, he knew that. Now let's go into another scripture, uh, John 1 43 53. The following day, Jesus went to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Beth Bethphada, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael said to him, We have found him whom Moses, Moses in the law, also the prophet wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said to, Philip said to him, Come and see. Then Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. So that right there was a gift of discernment. He knew, behold, an Israelite, because that's how they saw, that's how, you know, he looked, he said, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there's no deceit. And Nathan said, how do you know me? 
Like, hey, who, who, how do you know me? You, I just met you. That was the revelatory gift revealing about Nathaniel's heart, the discernment, the discernment to reveal what is Nathaniel's heart, what is, you know, what is who he is, his identity. And again, we'll talk about, you know, revel, uh, in revelatory gift, uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discernment spirit. So we'll talk about God, how the Lord used, how Jesus Christ, to be precise, how Jesus Christ was used by saying to, to Nathaniel, Behold, an Israelite indeed whom there is no deceit. That that was revealed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that reveal also made Nathaniel want to even follow Jesus Christ even more. And Nathaniel how do you know me? Jesus said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree. How did he know he was under the fig tree? That was the word of wisdom. Well, that was the word of knowledge. That was the revelatory gift revealing that to him. Okay, remember, word of knowledge to reveal the past and present. Okay, you know, word of wisdom is the future. And now, this is where the word of wisdom will come in. Okay, you know, before Philip, Philip, Philip called and said, you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. So basically, he saw, he saw by the revelatory gift, uh, Nathaniel, okay? And Nathaniel answered to, to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are, you are the king of Israel. Then Jesus said to him, Because I had said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And then here's the important part of, in the revelatory gift. He said to him, most assuredly, most assuredly, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. To see angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, that's the gift of discernment. Because it discerned to see, to see human spirit, to discern human spirit, to discern demonic spirit, to discern heavenly realm, okay? To discern the angels. What are the angels doing? That's what, that was the revelatory gift manifest, manifesting out of Jesus right there. And again, another one in the revelatory gifting, John 4, 16, 19. Jesus said to her, go call your husband. Now, this is the woman, you know, we call her the woman at the well, who basically, you know, the, the Samaritan woman. And Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered, said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have five husbands, and one whom you have now is not your husband, is that you spoke in that you spoke so basically by the revelatory gifting okay you know jesus revealed to the woman hey yeah you have no husband okay you had actually five husbands and the guy you with you're not even married to him and right there that really opened her eyes to draw closer to jesus because how do you know that and this is what she said the woman said said to jesus sir i perceive that you are a prophet which jesus is a prophet too you know and that that draw her closer to Christ, closer to Jesus. So we have to understand that, that in the revelatory gift, when God wanna he want he's gonna reveal to you, he's gonna reveal to you people's heart, people's past, okay, or stuff, whether through a vision or through through discernment or through a word about the people. But always remember this, and I say this, and I I say this right now because. Many times people use the revelatory gift as a way to, oh, I see this brother here. He has a he has a bad thing. God doesn't reveal things to hurt people or cause harm to people. He reveals things to help them. Remember that. So anytime I know some there's some ministers who like to use flow in their revelatory gift, you know, and it's always doom and gloom, destruction, everyone's gonna burn. That's not God. God Whenever God reveals something, it's to help and bring people closer to Jesus so they could be saved. If he reveals that a person has a sickness, he revealed that so that person could be healed. If he revealed a person's hurt, he revealed that so he could minister to them. Same with the woman and same with the Nathaniel. He reveals something about them, okay? It appears, oh, you know, it, you know, whoa, how do you know stuff about me? But it draw those people closer to Jesus. So the revelatory gift, the utterance gift, all the nine gift of the Holy Spirit, just to let you know. The whole purpose of that is to draw people closer to Jesus. So when God uses you, me, 
in the in these gifting in the revelatory gift in the utterance gift and the uh, and the and the uh, and the gift that do something is to draw people closer to Jesus to draw people closer to him not to draw cl people closer to us we are not supposed to be worship we worship god man was made to worship god man was not made to worship man okay so that's why I said be careful not to idle and worship other men because of the gifting that flows out of them. I remember years ago, uh, the, uh, the, I was in a, in, a, in a Bible study and I remember the Lord like flowed powerful to me, you know, the, you know, the anointing just flowed. And then I, I said something, you know, by the Holy Spirit. And one person looked at me and said, oh my God, like shocked as if like, you know, and 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 there I look at her face. I look at this person's face. And I realize, ooh, because I saw that face of, oh, oh, how do you know? That's one right there. I said, hey, God could use you in that gifting too, because I had to, sh I had to stop that 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 idol sh idol idol worship type of look that I saw in that person's face. Okay, because if I didn't stop that, I was like, whoa, you know, and, and thank God, I praise the Lord for helping me, even still helping me to this day, is to keep my heart pure and to any time when the Lord used me in the revelatory gift, utterance gift and gift that do something is to bring people closer to Jesus. It's not to hurt them, not to cause harm to them and not to go out and put these people's business on the internet, please. You know how many times I see that in the in in the body of Christ, where oh the Lord revealed to me, oh this is gonna happen, and, and it's always doom and gloom. It's never something to help. Remember, edification, exhortation, comfort. Okay, it's supposed to help people, bring people to closer to God, get people saved, heal, and deliver. These gifts are there to draw people closer to Jesus, to make Jesus real to them, not. For people to worship man or worship a church or worship a man of God, but to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to I'll get you that scripture right now, because many times you say what I'm saying, because I see this in the body of Christ, where many times you have people worshiping other men, you know, idolizing them. Oh, you know, like uh, here. Uh, for for he who speak in tongue does not speak first Corinthians fourteen two four. For he who speak in tongue does not speak to man but to God, for no one understand him. However, in the spirit he speak mystery. But he who prophesy speak edification, exhortation, comfort to man. Okay, and he speak you know. So basically, when we prophesy edification, comfort, exhortation. So whatever God revealed to you is there to help people. Edification, comfort. You know. And helping and also protects you too because if if the end if God shows you something that oh something there's a person if you if the gift of the sermon is there and it reveals to you something's wrong with a person's heart you have to heed that gift of the sermon to stay away because sometimes the, that gift of the sermon is there to protect you do you know how many times in the church where I remember um, someone shared this with me years ago where they said they were in a church and the lady the lady saw uh another person like you know she was uh in i think she was part of the the choir and she saw this 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 young girl and this young girl had a suicidal spirit on her she went and brought it to the pastor the pastor didn't know what the hell to do so the woman finally after you know uh singing behind you know singing went and ministered to that young woman delivered that woman from that spirit of suicide Okay, that's the give of the sermon to reveal what's happening, the demonic spirit, the human spirit, and to the heavenly spirit. Okay. Again, and and, and now going to, to the point I wanted first Corinthians 14, 24, 25. But if he all prophesy an unbeliever, uninformed person come in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all, and thus the secret of his heart is revealed. So falling down in his face, he will worship God and repent that God is truly among you. So when, when the revelatory gift, when the gift of prophecy, when the utterance gift, when all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is manifesting, okay? It will draw people to God. It will not draw people to man. It will draw people to God. That's why one thing I tell you right now as I'm preaching this, be careful not 
as you start flowing in the gifting that the Lord had blessed you with, and I believe God had blessed his believers, his children with wonderful gifting, be careful not, be careful so people do not end up worshiping you. Okay, you have to be careful. That's one thing I had to learn, and I thank the Lord for for helping me understand that. And don't make people come and bow and worship and all that stuff because this is when people lose it. And one more thing, okay, I feel the anointing with this. We do not pay people for those gifting to flow, whether the gift of healing, work of miracle, prophecy, revelatory gift. You should never, and I say this again, you should never pay people to prophesy over you or never pay anyone to, or never receive money for prophecy. Okay? Anytime when someone is, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to prophesy, oh, ten, pay me $10. That's not God. Freely you receive, you freely give. The gifts are free by the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's free by the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's free by the Holy Spirit. So you didn't have to pay for it. So you should never allow anyone to pay you money for those gifts to flow out. I remember a, a mighty man of God who I, uh, you know, I respect and I love. He was in a, in a place in a different country and someone called him up and said, Hey, you know, I'll give you $250,000 if you, if you come and pray for my friend. He's, he's some friend of his who was dying. And the man of God said, well, your friend's going to die. So why? Because you put money. You bought money. That's a true man of God. That's a true man of God. So you say, why? Because, you know, by the guy bring the money. If the man of God had, if the guy had said, hey, could you please come, you know, pray for my, pray, and did not bring money involved. If the Lord, the Lord could have spoken to the man of God, said, hey, go, go heal his friend. But since that, that uh, that man bought money and asking the man of God to pray for his friend, right there, that man of God said, hey, I don't want any of that, okay? Because many times people use, they're always using money as an incentive uh, for the gift things or for impartation. You should not pay for impartation. You should not pay for the gifts, okay? The gifts are free. That's why it's called the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we could go back to the important thing when we read that he said, the Holy Spirit distributed this gift freely, 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 okay? But one and the same, the Holy Spirit works all these things, distribute to each of those gifts as the Holy Spirit wills. Not as man will. So you can't go around selling your gifting. You can't go around also allowing people to pay you for your gifting. Okay. If people want to bless your ministry, bless your life. Okay. But then again, it should not be, oh, uh, 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 give me a word, $10. No. No. Be careful of that. And I say this because these are the things that many people have to understand because if they do not understand, they get caught up because I saw a lot of people caught up in that whole nonsense. Okay. So please be careful of that. So again, so now we, we just finished talking about the revelatory gift, okay? Now, now this is the gift that do something, the gift that healing, the, the f gift of faith, my favorite gift, uh, gift of healing and the working of miracle. The gift of faith is supernatural faith. This is not your regular faith. It's supernatural faith that comes upon you to do great things, to command things, to, to do signs and wonders and miracle, okay? And we're going to see that right now. We're going to see that right now. Um, Mark 6, 30, 40, Mark 6, 30 to 44. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all the things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said, come aside by yourself and to a deserted place and rest for a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they parted and de to a des deserted place in a boat by themselves. But as the multitude saw the departing, many knew and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, and Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because he because they were like sheep not having a shepherd so he began to teach them many things when the day was now far spent his disciples came to him and said there's a this is a deserted place this is a desert place 
and already the hour is late. Send them away that they could go, may go into surrounding country and village and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. But he answered, he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, how sh shall we go and buy 200 denar worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five, and, five loaves and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them sit, all sit down in groups and on the green grass. So they sat down in the ranks in hundreds and fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to the heaven and blessed it and broke the loaves and gave it to them. His disciples sat before them and then the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate, were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragrance fragrance of the fish and now those who have eaten the loaves are about 5,000 so he fed the 5,000 that is a working a miracle okay that is a working a miracle uh, that is a that is a gift that does something multiply money multiplying in your hand food multiplying in your hand that is a working a miracle okay you know and that's why you should expect you should ask God to use you in in that gift, you know, working a miracle to do well, working a miracle to help others, okay? Because you see that these people were in a desert place. They were, you know, and they were listening to a wonderful teaching of preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ knew, you know, that he said he wanted to bless these people. He wanted to provide for them. And through the working of miracle, he blessed these people, fed 5,000. And they're not even including the the hus the the children because they probably was I I estimated you know this is just my personal opinion they probably was more probably eight or more because remember those they were just talking about the men's not the men, not the women and not the children okay so that's the working of miracle now the gift of faith one of the wonderful gift and this this is a gift of faith tied in with the gift of healing okay Acts three six ten then Peter Peter. So now Peter is going to the temple. Okay. Peter and Paul going, Peter and not Paul, Peter and Paul. Peter and John are going to the temple. Okay. And they're going to go preach. Okay. And teach in the temple. And then they saw a beggar who's asking for food. And, you know, and then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what, what I do have to give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Immediately, his feet and ankle received strength. And he leaped and stood and walked and entered the temple. And walking and leaping and praising God. So that's faith to command. Uh, here's a person that's been lame, sitting at the gate of beautiful for years. But Peter and John walking. And they, they came and basically this guy asking them for for, for money and he said look I don't have money on you but what I do have in the name of Jesus Christ rise up and walk so he took him by the hand and basically life and healing came into the man bone to heal him that's the gift of faith and the working a miracle. Because that man was was lame. He was lame for for since you know they knew that he was lame for years. That was a sign and a wonder. That was the gift of faith and the working of the and the healing gift right there. I get caught up with that. That was the gift of faith. The gift of faith. <clears throat> the gift of faith and the healing gift flowing out of you know Peter and John's hand to heal that man and deliver him okay so now these are so I just set up these three you know gifts that say something okay gifts that reveal something gifts that do something all, all, you know, three gifts that three gifts that say something, three gifts that do something, three gifts that reveal something. We categorize them, okay? And I'll make sure I'll put that, um, put that on the, on the, on, on the website, okay? And now that's why with these gifts, God revealing these gifts to us. That's why we ourselves have to ask God to use us in these gifts. One thing I tell people. Okay, the Bible said, you know, earnestly desire these gifts. Okay, earnestly desire these gifts. Why? To help the church. 
okay, to help the church. Okay, God wants to use us in these, in these gifting. He wants to use you if you're a believer. You believe Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Receive him as your Lord and Savior. He wants to use your hand, your feet, your mouth. Why? So that he could do signs and wonders and miracles through you. Why? To build the church, to grow the church, to empower the believers to do great signs and wonders and miracles in the last day. To help us, me, you, build the church draw people unto the lord jesus christ proverbs 18 16 a man's gift make room for him and bring him before great man so when these gifts are flowing out they will do they will bring signs and wonders and miracles to be a blessing to you to be a blessing to me okay first corinthians 14 12 even so since you are zealous for spiritual gift spiritual gift let it be for edification of the church, to build up the church, to help the church, okay, that you seek to ex excel. So these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit that I've spoken of, they are there to help the church, build, build you up, it built the church up, and built your life up. Again, as going back to 1 Corinthians 14, 2, he who prophesy speak edification, exhortation, comfort to men. So it edifies, edifies the body of Christ, built the, built the church, draw people unto the Lord Jesus Christ. As I was saying before, that, that when, you know, when the guy's heart has been revealed, when his, you know, through prophecy, through the gifting has been revealed, his heart, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. And again, that's why, again, our Heavenly Father said, desire, desire. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Pursue love, the love of God, but desire spiritual giving, especially that you may prophesy, because God wants to flow through, through His body. He wants to flow through His children and empower them to do great signs and wonders and miracles. That's why, again, we have to act in faith. We have to receive in faith. We have to believe and receive the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit to manifest in our life, in your life, to do great signs and wonders and miracles. Because all these things, you know, and I say this, it's in God's word. You know, desire spiritual gift. So now your job is to put a demand on the gifting to see them manifest in your life. Because again, James uh, 1, 5, 6. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who give all liberal without reproach. He will give to him. But let him ask in faith. We have to come. We have to approach God's word in faith and believe. Father, I believe today you're going to use me in the utterance gift. I believe you're going to use me in the revelatory gift. I believe you're going to use me in the working of miracles. You're going to do signs and wonders to me. We have to believe in the name of Jesus that they greater manifestation of the nine gifts of the spirit. I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus that there'll be a greater manifestation of the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive that fresh anointing of the manifestation of the great manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Hey, <laughs> now, I received that. I release that on you in the name of Jesus. God, you know, let him act in faith with no doubting for he will doubt. It's like, wait, so come, you have to come to God with faith. And second, Hebrew eleven six, but without faith, it's impossible to please them. So every time God is pleased by faith, okay, you want to please Him, come with His word, come in faith. Say, Father, you said in Your word, earnestly desire the best gift. So I desire the utterance gift. I desire the the gift of faith to manifest and flow in my life, in Your life. So you have to come with. Faith, you have to come and believe and receive these manifestations of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit to flow out of you. And refreshing, refreshing of the Holy Ghost will come upon every believer. Even now, there's a manifestation, a greater manifestation of the Holy Ghost coming upon everyone who watched this video. Upon me, upon you, upon all of us, in a greater measure, you're going to see the move of the Holy Ghost in your life, in my life, in Jesus' name. 
Hora roko ra reseke tese. Ere eki ra reseke. Be mama moko ra de. Ramama nanando kura. Rararehe ki ara sete he. And again. Matthew 21, 21, 22. Jesus answered said. Assured I say to you. If you have faith and do not doubt. You will not only do what I was been done to the fig tree, but if you say to this mound, be removed and cast in sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask, whatever thing you ask in prayer, believe you will receive it and you shall have it. So believe that you receive these things and you shall have it. So you have to believe God, won't, but I believe Father in the mighty name of Jesus that I'm gonna, God is gonna use me in the nine gift of the Holy Spirit. And you, if you want a particular gift, you're welcome to pick that particular gift. Me, I pick nine or I like the utterance gift and I like the gift of faith, okay? So I pick that. You could pick whatever that you feel led in your heart, whatever that you want in the word of God regarding the nine gift of the Holy Spirit. And not well last but not least for the gift for the gift of the holy spirit to manifest we need to have a mighty move mighty outpour of the holy ghost acts 2 17 it shall come to pass in our last say i will pour out my holy spirit on all flesh your sons your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see vision your old men shall dream dream on my maiden servant on my maiden he shall pour out his holy ghost so as we have a mighty move a mighty outpour of the holy ghost we will see a greater manifestation of the nine gift of the Holy Spirit. I say this, if whatever church you go to, you have to believe God to use you in the nine gift of the Holy Spirit. You have to believe God to pour out the Holy Spirit upon you and flow through you so to see the nine gift of the Holy Spirit flow out of you. Luke 11, 9, 13, my favorite scripture. I say to you, ask, it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, it will be opened. For everyone who asks, receive and he will seek, find. And to him who knock, it will be opened. If a son asks for a bread from any, among, from any father among you, will he give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? If he asks for egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then being even know how to give good gift to your children, how much more will our heavenly father God in the mighty name of Jesus Give us a mighty upon mighty move of the Holy Ghost. So believe God for a mighty move, a mighty upon of the Holy Ghost. God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He wants to empower you by the Holy Ghost. And as you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You will move in a greater dimension of the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost, the revelatory gifts, the utterance gifts, the working of miracles, the healing of the gifts that do something in a greater measure. So, it's available to you. Because Ephesians 5, 18 said, Don't be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled and stay filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking to one another in psalm, hymn, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart, giving thanks to all the things of God in the Father name of the Lord Jesus and submit. So when you've been filled and stay filled with the Holy Ghost, the nine gift of the Holy Spirit will manifest out of you in a greater measure. That's why I say I told you, ask God for the for the gift of the Holy Spirit, but ask also God for more of the Holy Spirit. Because remember, it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? You know, it's it's you know, you can't say, oh, I just want the gift, but I want the Holy Spirit. No, it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. You get the Trinity. You always will get the Trinity, okay? You're always going to get God and God the Father, God the Son, God the... If you talk about Jesus, the Holy Spirit show up. If you talk about Holy Spirit, Jesus show up. If you talk about the nine gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit show up. If you talk about the Holy Spirit, the nine gift of the Holy Spirit show up. So get ready to see a greater manifestation, greater move of the Holy Ghost in your life. So Father, even right now, let me pray for you. Father, even now, I ask that a greater manifestation will come upon us, a greater flow of the utterance gift, of the revelatory gift, of the of the of the nine gift of the Holy Ghost will come upon us right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you anoint every believer 
every believer right now under the sound of my voice. Anoint them afresh with the Holy Ghost and fire. And anoint them afresh that the nine gift of the Holy Spirit will flow out of them this week and every week in Jesus' name. Let the fire of God come upon them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in Jesus' name. Fire of the Holy Ghost, a fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost come upon you right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus' name. <laughs> Jesus, glory to God. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your nine gifts. Thank you for the Holy Spirit filling us right now. Thank you for pouring out your mighty Holy Spirit upon me, pouring out your mighty Holy Spirit upon everyone that watched this video, blessing the believers, blessing those who watch it, healing those who need healing, delivering those who need deliverance, blessing those who need finances. Father, bless everyone who watched this video. Anoint them afresh with the Holy Ghost, even now, in the name of Anoint them afresh in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it, Father. Holy Spirit, I love you. Now, I'm just going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you have not given your life to Jesus, I always do this. I want to give everyone the opportunity. Those who are new to this broadcast, they, you know, you had not given your life or we want to recommit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, repeat after me. You know, to give your life, recommit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believe unto righteousness, with the mouth, with the mouth confesses made unto salvation. So repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. Jesus, thank you You died for me. I believe you're, come, you're risen from the dead. That you're coming back again for me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost and a hunger for the things of God and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am saved. You are saved. I am born again. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. I'm my way to heaven because I have Jesus Christ in my heart. Now, if you say this prayer, you are a child of God, let me pray for you. Father, bless those who have confessed Jesus Christ, who have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, more souls, and bless them, Father, and anoint them afresh with the Holy Ghost and fire right now from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in Jesus' name. So, oh, I feel the I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Now I'm just gonna give you opportunity to to be blessed. You know, I believe everyone who sow into this ministry will receive a hundredfold return financial blessing upon their life, upon what they have sown, what they have given. I think those I give th I thank I thank you for all those who have sown. Okay, and I also thank you that God is gonna bless you. I believe God is gonna bless you for what you sow and give to the Touch of God Church. The information to give is on is showing up right now. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Genesis 26, 12, 12, 14 said, Isaac sowed in the land and reaped the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him, and the man began to prosper and continue to prosper until he became very prosperous and had possession of flock and possession of herd, a great numbers of servants, and the Philistine in him. So ask the Lord what he has to give. Let me, I believe that what you sow today, what you give today in the touch for the touch of God ministry, you will receive a hundredfold return according to Genesis 26, 12, 14. Father, right now, 
Et à recéquité. Bless every giver. Bless every sower. In the mighty name of Jesus right now. Bless their finance. Bless their house. Bless their business. Bless them going in. Find, Lord, financially bless them. In the name of Jesus right now. Bless every seed that is sown. And bless every family here who is giving to the touch of God ministry. To the touch of God ministry. In Jesus name. Bless them financially. A hundredfold return come upon in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whew. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. So, thank you again for watching this video. Please share. Share with your friends, family. Share all over the world. Share. Share this video. Receive a touch from God. Receive blessing from God. Again, have a blessed day. It's good seeing you. I pray you are blessed. You have a wonderful week and a blessed week in the name of Jesus.